Hi, I'm Janet Piankowski, and this is Lloyd Herrera. And we're both excited about August 21st because that's the date on which the United States will be able to experience a total solar eclipse. So um, we will both be involved in certain ways with that. In my job at Bookmobile, I've gotten acquainted with Lloyd and I've learned that he is interested in all things space. And I realize this is, it was an interest from an early age. So tell me how that came about and where you are today. I was born in 1956. Back then, there was no space program. NASA wouldn't be created until 1958 or 59. The first manned orbit wasn't until 1961. We didn't know any of this stuff. It was all wonder to us. It, anything that had to do with space related was in the news. Newspaper, you couldn't get away from it. And that's where I came in. I was in, right in that period and I just got caught up in the whole rush of the whole thing. So ever since then, I've really been fascinated with anything space related. And at that time you were living in I was living then in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and even though it's a small island that's off in the Caribbean, they were space nuts. we got to remember Puerto Rico is roughly about two hours flight time from Cape Canaveral, so even though they weren't really in it, they were still excited about the whole thing. Yes. And your mother encouraged your reading because you enjoyed sci-fi. Right? And do today? Yes. I got reading the classic sci-fi stuff, Asimov, Helene, Byrne, others watching Lost in Space on TV. Mm -hmm. I went to see a movie. My, the first movie I saw that I can remember at a movie theater was The First Men in the Moon. It was a 1964 movie. It was campy, but it just excited me all to think that there was something else out there. <laughs> All right, so back to the eclipse, August 21st. As you can see from the map, the uh, path of totality goes across the United States. And Lloyd, where will you be on August 21st? I'm gonna drive myself with my wife to St. Joseph, Missouri. St. Joseph has been planning a huge solar eclipse activity. They have several venues. They are getting people from NASA to come in. There's going to be educational displays. Uh, so yeah, I want to be there. All right, so a big celebration along the path of totality. Topeka doesn't reside in the path of totality. But we'll have a pretty good look of a partial eclipse, but Lloyd, tell us how does what you're going to see in, in St. Joseph compared to what we'll see here in Topeka? The biggest difference is going to be how dark it will get. As I understand, Topeka will be at 90, some 90 percent of darkness. St. Joseph will achieve 99 point something or other. What that makes the difference is, first of all, it's going to be longer, 2 minutes 39 seconds in St. Joseph, as opposed to Topeka, which I think will be a few seconds less, but also we will see the corona matter ejecting around the sun, and I can, we can see that without glasses. Because of where Topeka is situated, there will never be a total solar eclipse that's viewed from Topeka, so you can never take off your glasses. It's very important, must have eye protection on there. So yeah, that's the big difference. Some of the other effects that you'll be able to see and experience is, I don't understand the science behind it, but I'm told that shadows will become very sharp. You will be able to see your head hairs or the hairs on your arms in clear shadow on your skin. Birds will stop chirping on there. They think it's night. Some plants may actually begin their nightly ritual of closing up. The winds may shift direction and increase on there because there will be a temperature gradient of 15 degrees. Up to 15 degrees it, will, it may change. So that changes the whole solar heating pattern. 
so winds may change on there. So that's some of the things you can experience. You'll be ex able to experience some of them in Topeka, but for the full effect, you've got to go where the totality is. And as I understand it, this is a rare event for United States. When was the last time we had the opportunity to see a total solar, solar eclipse? The last time a total solar eclipse passed through the entire United States was in 1918. So, so what would you recommend to the residents of Topeka then? If you cannot make it to the path of totality, go out, enjoy what you're going to see. Part of We all should share this event. It is something that, like you said, very rare, but something is a wonder that we must experience. So if Lloyd has excited you about planning for this event on August 21st, then the library has been the recipient of a limited number of viewing glasses. And on that date, you may come into the library and request one, a couple pair for your family to take home, or you can join us during the period of 11.30 in the morning to 2.30 in the afternoon. We will have the glasses available and we'll conduct a watch party here. If you wanna watch the live streaming by NASA in the auditorium, you could do that as well. There are other places that we're providing glasses to around the city for their mini watch parties, like the community centers, the Metro Stop, the Rescue Mission, maybe in state libraries. So we hope that you will find a way to safely view this eclipse and experience it. There will be programming in the early part of August, and you can refer to your uh, August-September library news for children's and adult programming around the theme of the eclipse. So Lloyd, let me see if I can do this. <laughs> I have a hard time my, doing this. My fingers this. are gone. I can't <laughs> do that anymore. Safe journeys. <laughs> Thank you. Live long and prosper.